Oh, okay, that's new. <laughs> this uh, I heard this audio message calls being recorded. Wonderful. Okay, so in terms of announcements, today's the second of July, twenty twenty four, and we're we're in week eleven, cohort B intensive training, and uh, we have the usual program. You have the schedule. Um, in terms of careers, a couple of announcements on the careers program. We're going to be starting work on our application materials this week. We want to be ready for the supported job search phase, which starts in about 20 days. So there's week 11, week 12, uh, a one week break, and then we go straight into the supported job search phase. So track selection and material preparation is going to be happening this week. And so that's important uh, for you and for us to make sure that you're clear on uh, which specific track are you going to be applying for. So what we're looking for is that every person, every trainee has um, one specific track that they're offering. So that's uh, that's in terms of announcements. Anyone else? Uh, anyone from the team who wants to make an announcement? Otherwise, we will go into the regular stand-up. Would love to hear how the week has been going uh, for everyone so far, what they're working on, excuse me, and any blockers, as well as their plan for today. The usual super standard uh, stand-up format. Two things I wanted to note before we jump to that, and you can put your hands up in the meantime. Um, one is that uh, we saw a request for more honest and clear feedback from the tutors when it comes to presentations, so we recognize that, and so we're, uh, we'll be working on that, um, trying to find the right balance between clear and positive and actionable. Um, other announcements, we just opened up yesterday, along with our new 10 Academy website, our applications for cohort C, so the next edition of the intensive training. And so if you know anyone uh, that you think would benefit from taking part in the intensive training program, and especially people who want to make the transition into work, um, or maybe I should rephrase that and say only people who want to make the transition into work. Um, we've had a couple of instances in the past where people have asked us to write letters of recommendation for those who want to go for further studies. And while we in principle uh, have no issue with that and we do want people to continue their studies, um, we're here for a very specific reason and that's to get people into full-time jobs. So especially if you have, uh, as most of you have asked for the deferred tuition, um, and we're not going to be able to offer uh, recommendations for people to go for further studies right away. So keep that in mind if you recommend uh, this somebody in the question is asked, can you, uh, you know, is this a good preparation for a master's program? That's not why we're here. Um, and the second thing I would say is that we want uh, people who are able to stick with it full time. We're now, you guys will be uh, crossing 225 graduates. We're now at 200, so 228 graduates in the intensive training. There are very, very, very few people who are able to uh, make use of the program on a part-time basis. <clears throat> and frankly speaking, even if people do get through the program and they somehow manage, I think that they miss, um, they miss a lot of it. So they may get their certificate, they may struggle through, but when they, it comes to interviews, when it comes to the world of work, we see that they're actually missing a lot of the, um, the feeling, the understanding, the, some of the essential parts of uh, what it takes to really be employable at the global level. So as uh, you're looking for people to make a recommendation to, please keep those two things in mind. We've also opened up uh, the second edition of our University to Jobs program. And uh, it is a, I don't know if it's the sister or if it's the cousin or if it's the neighbor of intensive training, but essentially with intensive training, one of the issues that we have is that we're looking for people with some programming experience and we want uh, to accelerate them very quickly up to a global level job. And we think that that's, we're very happy with that. Uh, we think that's a good model to follow. We will continue to improve and to offer this training program. There's a limitation. And the limitation is that we are assuming that there's a sufficient number of people who have a sufficient level of motivation and programming experience to make this very big jump. Um, for those of you who see the new application form, um, it's been put together in a way that makes a lot of reference to athletics and to cold showers and six packs. And, you know, it, it's actually well done. Uh, and I'm not taking credit myself because I didn't do it uh, or I didn't make the edit, but it's kind of, it's nicely done. Not everyone, including me, has a six pack. 
Um, and some people are just fine with having uh, what they call where I live a one path, which is you have a little bit of a you know, kind of a round uh, perturbance. And so with the U university, that, uh, all of this to say that the UTJ program is uh, looking for people uh, who don't necessarily have a programming background, but who are interested in becoming expert users of AI. So we're training you to be AI engineers and to deploy AI systems. But we recognize that the majority of people are not going to be AI uh, engineers and they're not going to be developing AI technology. They are rather going to be users of AI systems. So how can you um, use tools like ChatGPT, like no-code platforms, like co-pilots to get your work done in 10% of the time that it would otherwise take you? And we think that that's quite useful. So that's what the University of Jobs program is about. It's much less intensive, intensive in terms of requirements, but I think the team has put together a really, really good and useful set of content. And so that application is also open now. It opened yesterday, and that will be closing on um, the 26th of July. So we have about four weeks to open that. We would uh, encourage you to encourage people to apply for that. There is no cost to attend the UTJ program. It's open to anyone. Graduation requirements are a lot less strict. Um, it is part-time, it's about 20 hours a week, and it doesn't have to be uh, synchronous. So those are, uh, I said I had no announcements, and I lied, and I had a lot of announcements. So just to summarize, this week's about careers, uh, or two announcements as it relates to careers. We're going to be working on our materials, and we're going to be working on track selection, so that's one and two. And then we have a new website, we have two new applications that open, one for intensive training core at C, and the second edition of the University of Utah. So before we move on to the stand-up, are there any questions, thoughts, comments uh, as it relates to the non, not to rags and uh, not to the content for this week's challenges, but any non-rag related challenges? Or questions? Um, and also, yeah, one, another announcement we have for today is that, um, as promised, we'll be having the team from VZAI to give us some introduction on the challenge document and also on hybrid tracks. And yeah, make sure to join and ask questions and just be active in general. Yeah, that's all. And I think one of the speakers will be a batch four alumni. Is that right? Yes, correct. It's Daniel. Yeah. 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 So Daniel, uh, one of our batch four alumni, he was working for a couple of different companies and then he's now working for uh, Lizzie AI. And yep, he's, he did that himself. And she's now she's working on that. So any comments or questions from the group on uh, what we've been talking about before we move on to the stand-up? I will say one, uh, one point of feedback that we got on the website, uh, and it's correct, is that we need to improve the testimonials. It is rather one-dimensional at this point. So there's an extremely long list of things that we're going to be working on. You know, websites are really hard. <laughs> Websites are really hard, really painful. It's, uh, you present yourself to the world, and you, one could spend uh, years working on them. So there's always a deadline, and it's always imperfect. We have to accept that. But uh, we, do, we do welcome all feedback that's provided. So is the track selection doc shared? Um, I, if it's not shared, then we, I don't know if Pascaline is on the call. Pascaline, are you here? Yes, I am. Okay, so there's a question about is the track selection doc been shared? Okay, yes, so it's going to be shared today. Uh, we will let you know like via Slack quickly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? No? Okay, so let's go into the stand up. Let's hear from we have twenty minutes. Let's make use of the time. Um so we should be we should have enough time if we leave five minutes at the end for announcements to hear from fifteen people. So I'm gonna be counting. I wanna hear from fifteen people. So who's going first? Let's hear from Jabez, Mr. Sheila, Hillary. So Jabez, go ahead and then Mr. if you're still here. And then Sheila, then Hillary, then Abu Bakr. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Uh, yesterday I was uh, familiaring myself uh, to 
the technical document. Uh, I, we already have experience on the RAG system, so uh, okay. it was not that much new, but especially the evaluation part needs a little bit uh, understanding. So I was reading on the uh, evaluation part and also I was familiar myself with the data, so the contract, so that we, which answers what type of data it is so that I could properly chunk it so that the AI could, the AI model could answer it better. And I, I was trying some algorithms so that uh, it will properly answer the question based on uh, the context given. So I was trying to do that. So I have got uh, good results, but there is a, a little bit challenge. Some of the answers, it's, it's hallucinating. So I need to make sure that it's uh, already, it should answer on the, based on the context. So I'm working on that. I will continue that also today. Thank you. Okay. Any major blockers? Uh, ju just this one, but uh, it's not that major. I, I think I will improve uh, today. Okay. Did you? I'm. I'm. I noted that you said uh, rags are not new to you. Do you feel like you've made a? Uh, are you surprised that you can make that statement? Uh, whereas three months ago, I think you would have. What would you have thought three months ago as a comparison now in terms of hearing the the word rag? Hello? Yeah. So, I mean, it, I think when we spoke three months ago, the word rag was rather unfamiliar to you. And so now you made the statement that, yeah, you know, rags are not new to you. You seem comfortable with them. You're working on a new uh, domain. So how do you feel about that progress that you've made in three months? Yes, yeah, I'm very uh, glad about that because as you said, uh, I, I would have no recollection of what RAG is if I was asked three months ago, but now I have, uh, uh, I know where to go. At, at least the basic thing is that I know where, uh, what the codes looks like and what the concept is. Uh, and uh, I know I have to familiarize myself more, but uh, I know the basic things and I'm, I'm glad about that. And I'm also uh, exercising to, uh, to make it in the heart so that I will do, uh, I will solve more complex problems. Okay. Yeah, you're ahead of me because for me a rag is still something you use to clean the kitchen. But uh, yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Let's go to uh, Mister and then Sheila and then Hillary, please. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so you see here, uh, I was looking through uh, the challenge document and I was also trying to understand blockchain a little bit more uh, and i tried to work on some parts like um, the the retrieval and the generation of the, the, the generation part of the rack system for today i'll be more uh, reading about the uh, raga and uh, how to optimize uh, the system also i'm planning to have some discussion with uh, fellow trainees uh, okay um, as we prepare for the supported job search phase, Mr. I would like you to try and improve your microphone. It's very muffled. It's difficult to hear you. So I heard probably 60% of what you said, and I'm using uh, AI to figure out the rest. But uh, it may be worth investing in a slightly better microphone. Okay. Yeah. I know. I know it sounds very, uh, very silly or a very minor point, but I think it. In many ways, that's a good uh, five, ten dollar investment. I don't know what it costs in where you're living, but get a good microphone, please. It is hard to hear you. Okay, let's go to Sheila and then to Hillary, and then we'll go down the listing of people who put their hands up. Hi. Good morning. Good one. That's a nice microphone. I can hear you. Um. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um. So uh, yesterday, what I was working on was the literature review to figure out how to improve RAG systems. So I was compiling my documents and I'm um, going through them. And yeah, today what I'm planning to do is to try and build a simple to work on task two, which is building the simple Q&A pipeline using RAG. And uh, just like Jabez, um, RAG is a little bit familiar to me now. And it's not something I think I would have said at the beginning of the program. So thank you. Were you aware of the concept of a RAG before? And no, I didn't know anything about RAG. Okay. 
Wonderful. That's really good to hear. And I think the, the part that I like the most is not that uh, you're comfortable with rags or you're, you're familiar with rags, but what I hear is the comfort in the approach to how to figure things out. This learning how to learn is the most important thing because it means that once you start working and your manager presents something or OpenAI releases something, um, you're, you know you have a playbook. You know how to react to it. You know how to go and learn about it, try it out. And you're not worried that if you don't figure it out in the first hour, you have a sense of how long it takes to figure something out and to deploy and then to improve and to read. That learning how to learn process is uh, super important. So I'm really happy to, to hear that. Um, let's go to Hillary, please. Uh, good morning. Um, so uh, for, for me also, RAG was, uh, was also new to me. So uh, looking even at Ragas, it was introduced last year. So and it's a tool that we currently we have to use it now. So um, for, uh, yesterday I, I I went through and uh, did the retrieval and generation part of Rag. And uh, I'm, today I'm hoping to uh, I'm planning to optimize uh, the improvement of the generation and um, working on the evaluation of the from the evaluation data sets. Um, so I'm planning to use Ragas uh, currently. Uh, thank you. Okay, sounds good. Let's go to Abdul Rahman, please. Abdul Rahman has dropped. Let's go to Nia Musi. Hello, everyone. Um, yesterday, uh, yeah, yesterday, I spent time on going through the document and I was able to create an uh, environment to work on and I'm working on how to retrieve um, documents. Yeah. Okay. Any blockers, Niamusi? Yeah, um, none for now. Okay. Sounds good. Let's go to Abdul Rahman, who's just come back. Hello, sorry, I just uh, got a call. Yeah, no problem. We're here. So let's hear your update, please. Okay. Uh, yesterday I uh, was uh, trying to to do something on RAG. I surprised that I forget uh, most of things. And this is also related to what we are preparing for the three lead, uh, three, three lead, me and Hillary. So stay tuned for this. And uh, uh, of course, I. I still feel I'm better uh, because we we do similar thing uh, for a few weeks. So I will get this out and uh, back to evaluation part because I didn't uh, I can't do it uh, previous one. So I'll try to do my best uh, in this time. It's another chance for me. Okay. Is there any reason why you couldn't do it last time, which is result this time? Did something change? Uh, uh, last time, it's, uh, it's new things. So I feel like uh, it's hard to, to do all the projects. So I focused on build the rug, and I delayed the evaluation part. So it's a kind of uh, unbalanced or time management. OK. OK. That sounds good, but it sounds so. What I really like is this this approach of this maturity to say I got sixty percent done last time, and this is why I'm okay with getting sixty percent done, and this is how I'm going to improve this time. So I think that that mature approach is really really useful for the long term. So I yeah I think that's really good. I salute that. Um, let's go to Temeskan, and then to Michael, and then to Daisy. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Can you speak a little bit louder, please? Uh, sure. Well, uh, yesterday, ah, much better. Uh, so much as, better. as all of us, uh, I, I was going through the challenge document and uh, uh, I tried to, to do more exploration with Langchain and I build uh, a simple retrieval rug, uh, and 
the progress is good no blockers so far uh, i'm optimistic about this week and uh, i like i like the the fact that we are going through with drag again so more exploration about it to master it and uh, i'm confident with that so no blockers for now and we're that's augmenting it. that's the augmentation part of the reg we're up. We're augmenting. We're going through. We're doing it again. So, it's a little, little joke. Um, okay, sounds, sounds fine. Michael. Michael, are you there? Okay, let's go to Daisy, please. Hello, good morning, everyone. So yesterday I spent time going through the resources to understand how I'm going to implement uh, the land system. And uh, something new that I discovered was query expansion. And I understood how it works and how it's important. And that's something I want to include in the land system this time around. And um, I also uh, gained an intuition of how embedding works by going through the tutorial on the planning AI. And yeah, that's the progress I've learned so far. Okay, sounds good. Any blockers? No, none yet. No blockers. Okay, uh, let's go to Michael. Michael, if you're available now. No, okay, I'm just gonna call on different people. We'd like to hear updates from them. Um, let's hear from Wandera and let's hear from Gilbert or Gilbert and uh, then let's hear from Abu Bakr. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, um, uh, yesterday I, uh, I was reading the resources. I read, um, uh, I got to know more about RAG because last. Uh, like uh, the project is a bit different last time we did a chatbot this time it's a question and answer system so it's a bit different and then i uh yeah i read on on uh, the agents i don't know uh they, they spoke about agents yesterday so i didn't really understand the, what that was but i read through how to use um okay how agents um make the rug system a bit better and then I also read more on uh, the retriever models and the generator models and when to use them. And then I also read more on when to use uh, fine tuning or rag, depending on whatever use case you have. Yeah, so I've read more on the resources. I don't really have a blocker yet. And uh, so today I'm going to start working on uh, the tasks. I think task, um, task, task, task two, because I read most of the stuff in task, task one. Yeah, that's how my user just started. Sounds fine. Thanks. Let's go to Gilbert. Gilbert, are you there? Let's go to Abu Becker. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so I have been actually trying to better grasp, grasp the uh, gist of the uh, the challenge. So yeah, I've been trying to collect resources, gather as much as as much impo information as possible. So uh, also, um, I I got started on learning on how to how to execute those. But I'm I'm still uh, like not confident enough to get started on the challenge. So I think I need to have more information on that. So probably uh, after uh, 6 p.m., probably I will just get started on it. I'm planning to do that. So today would be more on uh, like setting up the environment and everything. So. So uh, why why are you not confident? What's what's preventing you from being confident? I I wanted to actually uh, 
do this project like properly by understanding like also yeah mentioned uh, you need to justify everything like uh, why we are uh, choosing the tools we are choosing so i think i wanted to do it better maybe for that reason yeah i didn't hear what you said yeah i mentioned that uh, we need to justify everything we have been doing so uh, we actually chose the tools why we chose the tools we chose so i wanted to actually do it uh, the right way that maybe that's why so but are you able to uh describe the specific questions that you have so a lack of confidence could be that you there's specific questions that you have or you don't have a sense of how things are ordered what's what's the issue that you're facing so it's not an issue per se but i wanted to actually fully plan uh, my workflows like but it's it's like it's i know it's a little bit hard we can't fully plan it uh, up ahead but i i just maybe uh, if i gather more information on the aspects of each tasks maybe i could have but i'm giving it a time limit for that and so is it this is it the top level diagram that you're confused with or is it one level down so the top level diagram is sort of i would assume the workflow or how the different systems go together is it at that level that you're confused or is it one level below that what you do within each step or what each tool does no i didn't go one level deeper uh, I, it's just the top level uh, implementation what what tools to actually choose and why we why should why the reason i'm choosing those tools i just want to understand those things better their their, their part so i think that's a, that's an extremely important question so why don't you uh go to figma or take a piece of paper write it down and make a proposal and share it with some of your colleagues and see who's ready to get in a half hour discussion with you and invite one of the tutors to be part of that discussion too or to have a slack related discussion because i think this is exactly where um you will probably be, you'll probably be working uh, in your first job for somebody who has some experience but the big difference between the person who reports to an engineer versus reporting to a business person is the ability to come up with a good top level schematic among other things of course but that's one of the things that really is difficult Okay, so why yes. not why, why not get it out of your head onto paper and start having that uh, discussion or iteration with other people because I believe or I can guarantee you that as good as you are you'll never get it perfect yeah I, I actually haven't found uh, a good tool but but I'll try figma I usually just write it down as bullet points so yeah, maybe but, that... could, but but don't underestimate the value of a piece of paper and a pencil and take a picture Okay, okay. I mean, that, that also works, right? You're just trying to have a first discussion. Or use PowerPoint or slides or something. But yeah, it, the, the, the tool doesn't matter. But I think getting it down on paper and starting to discuss, because for me personally, the act of writing it down forces me to get to a level of detail that if I just have it in my head, then I can't do it. Yeah, okay. Anyone else want to go? Otherwise, we're going to recap the announcements and we're going to wrap up on time. Well, no, we're going to wrap up a few minutes late, but not too many minutes late. Anyone else have a burning need to go? Anyone else is anyone else who's super blocked? Can I ask a question and uh, would look for a response with a show of hands? Who else is facing a similar level of confusion to Abu Bakr in terms of the top level architectural design? Can you see a show of hands? So Johannes, Mr. Yamusi, Bethlehem, Tewodros, Abdul Rahman. Okay, so this is good. So this is where we need to understand. Um, you guys need to get that together and either ask for help or start a discussion yourself and keep the tutoring team informed so that they know uh, where you're facing challenges so that we can provide support. A follow-on question to that is, I, my first question was, who is struggling with 
uh, getting the right top level design. My follow on question is who is so confused that they would just like to listen to that discussion about the top level design so that they can even come up with the top level design themselves. It could be there's a bunch of people who don't even know where to start and they would just like to listen to people who are a little bit further ahead so that they can learn. So can you put your hands up? Anyone who's in that situation who would just like to take part in that discussion. Just listen. They don't have to say anything. They just want to listen. <laughs> okay. I was just going to say, I'm, if there's nobody who's willing to say yes, then I think we don't have, people are not being, uh, they're being unnecessarily shy. So we have three people. So Abu Bakr, I'm going to give you the task of organizing this meeting today before six o'clock, which you said is your cutoff time. Um, let's hold it as an open discussion. Um, please make sure that the tutors are informed so they can be there. And let's, uh, I'd like, I'm curious uh, what comes out of that discussion, because I think it'll be quite useful. And I think we should make it open to everyone. Those people who are able to kind of iterate, they should uh, discuss, and everyone else can just listen. Because this is actually how a lot of things happen in the world of work. This is why um, when you guys start working, you'll hear about people calling meetings. To a large extent, meetings are a way to reduce uh, uncertainty and also to share responsibility. Where you call a meeting, you present something, and the person says, this is what I'm going to do. And to an extent, if nobody disagrees, then you've gotten them to buy into what you're doing. <clears throat> and they can no longer afterwards say, I didn't know. You were at the meeting. I presented what I'm going to do. You had your opportunity to improve it. If you don't have, if you couldn't improve it then, then we agree, and I'm going to go ahead and do this, and we're going to share the responsibility. So Abu Bakr, uh, job to you to put that together. In terms of uh, recapping announcements, we have uh, the, the track selection uh, is going to be published or shared today by Pascaline, so keep an eye out on Slack for that. Um, we're also going to be uh, sharing the uh, uh, we're going to be getting our materials ready this week, so keep an eye out for that. We have cohort C applications, which opened up yesterday, and they close. It's a very long, we've left a lot of time, uh, end of September, so there is time. But if you know somebody who's willing to, uh, who wants to go through the intensive training process, they're willing to be full-time, they want to get a job afterwards, please encourage them to apply. Um, and we also have the University of the Jobs program, which is, uh, it's focused on people uh, who want to be AI users, not AI engineers. No previous programming expertise is required. It's about 20 hours a week, which means you can spend, uh, do this alongside work. And there's no cost to join the UTJ program. And there we're actually, we've uh, structured that to be ready for a few hundred people. So a much, much, much larger group. So with that, uh, I'm three minutes late. I don't have any more announcements. Last call, anyone had something to share? No? Nope. All right, we have a guest talk, our challenge introduction today from the ZAI and also featuring one of our alumni, Daniel, uh, from Batch 4. And I wish everyone a very productive and very useful day. Thanks, everyone.